We said before that tuning a car is one of the best things that can be done to get the most bang for your buck regarding modding. There can be a few different ways to achieve your goal for more power. For me, there's a better path to power. Should you get a flash tune? Maybe a piggyback? How about a standalone ECU? It can be a little overwhelming at first, but allow us to shed some light on the subject. This is Marvin with Eurotuning, owned and operated by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, and we're here to learn you a little something something about tuning. Don't forget, you can visit Eurotuning.com to get the best parts for your car, like tunes, wheels, exhaust, intakes, and even OEM replacements. I also got a little secret. Come here, look closer. If you join our VIP list, you can get all the latest info and access to exclusive sales that aren't just for anybody. It's for very important people like yourself. Click the link in the description below to join. I'm sure we've all been there at some point. You just install a new intake, exhaust, whatever it may be. You're feeling pretty good when you hop in, fire your car up and give it the beans. Your butt dyno is telling you that you think there's a change but you're not quite sure. Or maybe you've thrown that super fun check engine light. You ask around, you ask back, are you tuned? Let's get into the weeds and see why you should be doing this. First off, what is an ECU and how does the tune help? Every modern car needs some sort of ECU or engine control unit to tell the engine's multiple moving parts what to do and how to do it. Think of it as a brain in your car. ECU tunes are just various settings based on various data points to optimize and get more out of how your engine performs. Car manufacturers set these variables to stay within a safe range and to give what they deem the appropriate amount of power to any particular vehicle. Auto engineers focus on emissions, smooth drivability, various fuel types that may possibly be used by the end user. However, tuners have found a way to get in there, do all sorts of awesome computer stuff, crack the code, and start adjusting these values. Tuning has definitely come a long way in the past few decades. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, things were very different. Carburetors were on their way out. Fancy fuel injection was so chic, it was even a selling point on new modern vehicles. Fuel injected investment. Engine management was also getting way more sophisticated. Getting a third-party ROM chip was an option for tuning purposes. This meant physically removing the ECU and soldering a ROM chip directly to the circuit board. This allowed for some adjustability for those who knew what they were doing. There are also reflash ROM chips. Sorry. So that allowed changes, which meant not needing to pull the existing chip on the ECU and allowed adjustability. The problem is, some ECU systems could only be flashed a few times before they were toast, while others could take anything you threw at it. I could do this all day. As tech progressed, things got a lot more complicated. Which brings us to today, with the hyper-advanced ECUs that are just getting more and more technologically advanced every year. So why on earth would you even want to tune your car? Well, as car enthusiasts, you all already know, we can't leave well enough alone. When it comes to modding, it just makes sense. When you have a new intake, exhaust, or other mods, getting a tune will help you get the most out of the changes. It's important to make your ECU aware of the additions. Not only does it allow you to get the most out of the new mods, but it ensures your engine is running smoothly and as reliably as possible. Always a good idea to make the ECU aware of any changes made. Some engines are also really receptive to tuning. I know my GTI felt like a totally different car with just a stage one tune. Not to mention, I even get better gas mileage now. Now that we've decided to tune, which direction do you want to go? Today we'll be going over the three big options. Those being a standalone ECU, a piggyback tuner or a tuner box, or an ECU flash. They each go about things a little bit differently and have their own pros and cons. So let's just dive right into it. You're probably asking yourself, what is a standalone ECU? A standalone tune is just that, a completely standalone replacement for your car's ECU. A blank slate that is fully customizable, and when I say fully customizable, I really mean it. They can be very expensive, and are for a very specific use case that isn't for the faint of heart. Chances are if you're watching this video and you have no idea what we're talking about, you probably shouldn't even bother with one. On the other end of tuning, however, there's the piggyback tune. As the name implies, a piggyback tune is a device that gets wired into the factory ECU and works in conjunction with the factory system. There are two schools of thought regarding how this typically works. The first is to intercept signals from the different various sensors before they reach the ECU and then modify those values on a fly to make the ECU behave the way it wants. The second method does it 
after the ECU sees the data from the sensors. The advantage of this route is ECU sees all the values that it wants, but on the back end, it doesn't control what's happening after the fact, as the piggyback then takes over from that point. The great thing about modern piggyback tuners over back in the day is that many now actually have built-in processors to help make the necessary changes and do the work to be way more effective. There are tons of advantages to having a piggyback tune. It's pretty much a simple solution, mostly plug and play, and there's no coding necessary. They're a great option for brand new cars that may be under warranty or not have a flash tune available yet. Some newer systems like the piggyback tunes from Raceship even allow you to fine tune your tune via an app since some are Bluetooth capable. They allow you to choose from three distinct performance modes, which include the efficient eco mode for saving fuel on your commutes, sport mode for improved mid-range flexibility on open roads, and race mode for max performance. It also doesn't flag the system as a flash of the ECU counter, so it's virtually invisible when scanned. However, a con is that although it's invisible if scanned, it's pretty visible physically as it's a box that gets wired in. Luckily, it's fairly simple enough to remove and reinstall if you get work done at the dealership for your new car. The last con I could think of is should the device get damaged and become inoperable, that's pretty much it for you tune until you fix the problem. As far as I know, however, a lot of the modern piggyback tuners are a lot more rugged than those of years past. The last option we'll cover today is the tried and true ECU flash tune. This works by taking the stock ECU of your car and rewriting variables to act how the tuner wants. There are a lot of benefits to this, such as the customization of things like boost pressure, fueling, ignition timing, etc. to maximize efficiency. Tunes can also be written to take different fuel types like E85. It's also nice that it's self-contained since the stock ECU is already in place. It just rewrites the software. It can also be tuned to your specific engine's modifications, though this is a little less commonplace. So the different options for an ECU tune, off-the-shelf versus a fully custom tune. Both options have pros and cons. Off-the-shelf tunes are pretty safe as they've been tried and tested by the tuner across many different vehicles. A benefit of this is that there are tons of options to choose from that are popular especially within the North American VW Audi community, such as Unitronic, 034, Integrated Engineering, APR, and more which you can get through us at yourtuning.com. Now on the flip side, if you have access to someone who can custom tune your car properly, that will ensure you have a best spoke tune that your specific engine can benefit from. If you go this route, however, make sure it's from a repeatable tuner and flash with a reliable device like a Cobb access port as catastrophic failure can be costly. Just like many things in this world, an ECU flash isn't perfect. There may be a chance that your car's ECU hasn't been cracked yet and may not have a tune available. Price wise, they will cost a little more than a piggyback, but will definitely be cheaper than a full blown standalone. Depending on what ECU flash you get can also determine if the tune is married to a specific vehicle's VIN, meaning you may not be able to resell the tune should you move on to a different platform. Now that you know a little more about these options, let's review and let's think about some things to consider before you proceed. If you want to go full out or maybe did an engine swap or something like that and know what you're doing, a standalone is for you. If you want to add a little spice and just want a simple plug and play setup or maybe your ECU isn't cracked yet, the piggyback is perfect. If you want to do more customization, but don't want to get as deep as a standalone, an ECU flash is a great option for you, especially if you go with an off-the-shelf or no repeatable tuner who can provide a custom tune. The yields can definitely pack a punch. So there you have it, some additional insight on methods to tune your car. Whether you want to get a little pep in your car step, or if you want to drop the hammer and go nuts and unleash the hidden potential of your car, there's a little something for everyone. Let us know down below what tune or tuning method you decided to get for your car. Or you have another car question or topic you want us to cover, let us know. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever we come out with more content. That next video could possibly be something that you asked for. Take it easy and happy modding.